Wow. This is terrible. No, no, no. Nothing must happen to this fish. Yes, on this very day, I observed this fish have not moved all through the period I was checking on them via CCTV. It was more like they're hiding. Besides, they have failed to eat the food thrown in the pond. No form of the usual aggression when eating. It was so obvious they have been, to me, I mean, it was so obvious they have been infected with some form of disease of which I don't even have a clue. And so what exactly happened and what steps did that take to ensure prompt treatment and quick recovery of the affected fish? This is what I'm here to share with you. Hello and welcome. If you're new to my channel, my name is Femi Peters. Today my intention is to share with you an unfortunate experience which occurred in my fish farm a couple of months back. It has to do with six of the fish I hope to use as brewstock. For those who may not understand what brewstock means, brewstock sometimes called brood fish in aquaculture a set of mature individual fish used for reproduction or breeding purposes. I hope you're finding this useful. If so, please do consider giving the video a like and kindly subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It all really helps. Thanks so much. I'm a potential. We saw it inside the pond, inside the, the plastic pond. Look at it. Look at what. Is, look at the color now. This one has passed on. Uh, Ah, this is this is shocking. This is a surprise. We are changing the water of the pond. We are changing the water of this pond. We now realize that, uh, that one of them is not moving. So it was based on that. We now begin to check. We now see this now. As it stands, we already lost one. And that's really, really painful. Actually, blame it on the negligence of the staff. Because, I mean, aside of you feeding the fish on um, twice a day, the next thing is to ensure this fish are agile, is to ensure that this fish are actually moving very well and eating very well. And um, when they're dumb in this kind of situation, all you need to do is to at least be inquisitive enough to know what exactly is going wrong with them but they didn't do that and so i held them responsible for this because i mean this can't go unnoticed someone has got to be responsible for this negligence if not for the timely intervention i mean i would have lost all the fish thank goodness the whole thing happened within this tank as a result um we were able to you know control the spread of the disease i mean you could have gone onto those large ponds you know and that that's me losing close to ten thousand pieces of fishes in, in in those ponds and uh <laughs> oh god i don't know where what, what i would have done and so the first thing I uh, instruct them to do is to have the fish isolated. I mean, it's obvious that something is going on within that tank. So what we did was we moved all the fish into a different pond, fresh water, and um, the initial tank where they were, we emptied, we drained the tank, but we disinfected. And from there, I started asking around. I mean. If you looking at the picture, I mean the video here, you can tell that the most of the fish there's blood around the, the tail and uh, around the fins. So it's of no use adding salt to it. That that would just kill them. Salt would have been you know, aquatic salt would have healed them up, but I I don't wanna take that chance. 
So the next thing I did was to ask around. I mean, a few farmers, fish farmers that I know, um, but their responses was they haven't seen a kind of disease, you know, of this magnitude. So they won't be able to provide a solution. So the next thing for me now is to hit the um, Google. You know, I started searching online to see what exactly is the problem. Eventually, I came up with something that matched what I'm having currently experiencing. That's when I discovered is actually a tail rot. Tail rot. That's what the problem is. Or fin rot. It is a typical catfish developing a sore red tail and is most likely a sign of bacterial infection often caused by poor water quality and it could be related to issues like uh, maybe ammonia spikes you know when the water isn't changed often it could be overcrowding in this case it isn't overcrowding neither is it ammonia spike or injuries in the tank leading you know to a condition commonly referred to as tail rot well so um because I wasn't physically there, so the first thing we did was to remove them all so that we can treat them. That way we can quarantine them. That's that's what I did. The next solution now will be what sort of treatment would I get? So from there, I discovered that I can actually use tetracycline, um, chlorophenicol, and vitamin C, you know, just to heal them so that they can recover quickly enough. When about procuring those medicine and that was administered okay, to them. This is the mixture of um, tetracycline being put into the water which we apply to the to the pond. Uh, you can see the um, chlorophenicol and vitamin C being mixed together. That's the vitamin C at the bottom of the water. Eventually, we start observing them to see how they react to it. They didn't react much, and this was how we went about treating them. Yeah, it was half a sachet of vitamin C caplets, that's six pieces. Half a sachet of tetracycline caplets, that's six pieces. And four couplets of chlorophenicol, that's four. These were administered to them on a daily basis. We tried that for three days. So at every interval, I mean every day, and then refilled with new fresh water. On the third day, we noticed that uh, all the saw parts, I'm talking about the fins and the tail part everywhere was drying up. That's when we knew we've achieved something. Mind you, like I said earlier on, I don't have a clue about this disease. And I don't know what, what it entails. So reading from the internet I was able to come up with a solution I mean this worked for me I'm not an expert at this but it did work for me so from from now on this is this will be my own application whenever I experience such things and I don't think it's gonna happen anymore because I eventually I did find that that part of the pond the internal part there's a sharp part of it there that actually cause the whole thing so maybe in the process while they're swimming along underneath um, their body comes across a sharp object so what we did was firstly isolate the whole the tank itself so currently we're not using the tank I'm even thinking turning that particular tank into my vegetable beds I'm just gonna cut it into three parts and use it for something better yes I hope you find this video very useful if so do consider giving the video a like and kindly subscribe to the channel if you haven't already you know this will go a long way into helping me also as I'm giving you an information that would be helpful to you as well so you're doing so will be highly appreciated thank you yeah to sum the whole thing up the amount of tetracycline used in terms of milligram was 250 milligram per one cup that is six couplets of that while the vitamin c that was used is 250 milligram per one per one 
couplet. And um, the same thing goes for the chlorophenicol, 250 milligram per one couplet or one tablet, depending on what you have at your end. Yeah, and the uh, water, when I did isolate them, don't forget I did mention that those fish were six in number, were lost one in the process. But then we had five left and the minimum there was weighing about uh, uh, 1.5 kg. So we had to isolate them and put them in a pond containing a water of 1000 liter. And the solution that was added and um, that you had the medicine inside, the solution was 35 CL. So that's just the technical side of it so you know what to do in the future if you have to follow my lead i hope this helps now i must stress this it's not advisable to regularly treat your catfish with antibiotics mm -hmm. yeah because they may become antibiotic resistant so it is alternatively if you have a veterinarian I, I think it's important to consult with them because they're able to perform the necessary test to determine the type of infected bacteria in question naturally i prefer the natural means because um in my in my farm normally what we use is as form of treatment is the herbal treatment which is the bitter leaf or i use the salt dip and the salt bath that's what i use and it's been so efficient and effective one finally don't forget to give the video a like and kindly subscribe to my channel and i shall see you in the next video take care bye The remaining ones, they have injuries on the body, you know, we we'll show them to you. So it's, it's so from one concern, but we don't know what exactly the problem is. So I just said I should do this video for you to be able to see what situation is right now. Ah. No. Wow. This is terrible. No, 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 nothing must happen to this fish. We will put them, we will take it inside the other, we will take inside the third, the third pond. They, they, they didn't fight themselves before now. This one will be fired. So no, this one will be fired.